Today, we're headed to Madeira in the cockpit with Condor. And not only that, but the weather is not looking too great. If you're familiar with Madeira, you'll know that means it's probably going to be a good video. And we're joining Pascal Schmidt, Condor first officer and well-known aviation YouTuber, whom you might remember from our last Condor video about the A330neo. We've got a front row seat for the entire day, riding along with this crew until the return to Frankfurt later on in the evening. So join us and this excellent Condor crew en route to one of the most interesting airports in the world. Stay tuned. So we have a pretty interesting situation today. Um, the weather is a little bit tricky today for our flight to Funchal. So here's our flight plan. We have all the information right here um, concerning our, our routing. There is a chance that we won't be able to land at Madeira today. So we need to have an alternate airport. And usually it's Porto Santo. It's the island near Madeira. But if the weather is bad in Madeira, there is a chance that it's too bad for landing in Porto Santo as well. So we decided to put the Canary Islands into our alternate plans, um, which means that we will take so much fuel that we will have the possibility to divert to one of the Canary Islands. For operational reasons, it would be Tenerife today. So pretty interesting situation. Here in Frankfurt, for example, we have an ILS approach, so a so-called precision approach that gives us the possibility to fly very near to the ground without seeing anything. But here in Madeira, it's pretty interesting because we have to see the airport much higher. So it's 940 feet, which means about 300 meters above ground and the cloud layer is predicted to be about 250 meters. So with a little bit of luck, we could land at Madeira today, but we have to see. doing the, uh, the cockpit preparation here in Frankfurt. It's a very special situation because um, I'm a co-pilot. That means I will do takeoff and landing in Frankfurt today because Madeira is a special airport uh, where only the captain is allowed to take off and land. Um, that means I will prepare the aircraft now for the flight to Madeira and after takeoff we will um, change controls. So. The captain is in charge as a pilot flying then for, for the landing in Madeira and thereafter for takeoff as well and thereafter we will change again and arm pilot flying for the landing in Frankfurt. The most interesting topic today is definitely the weather. If the weather situation is like it is forecasted today, Madeira is very interesting. The situation could be that we will do an approach at Madeira for runway 05, so we will do the famous circling approach. If we won't be able to see the runway 
before we do the famous base turn to, to the runway 05. If we can't see the runway at this point, we have to abort the whole approach. There's always enough fuel to do a second approach and we could try it again, yeah? But for the second time, we can't see the runway, then we have to decide where to go. And um, Porto Santo has no precision approach as well. That means a very high minimum as well. Um, if the cloud layer is low at Madeira, it will be low at Porto Santo as well. So we can try that, but thereafter we, have, we definitely have to decide uh, where to go. And um, we have enough fuel for today that after all that, we can still go to Tenerife and there we have a precision approach. No critical weather situation at the moment. So that's our options for today. We planned 19.2 tons of fuel for the flight to Madeira. So we are still waiting for the refueling truck to refuel the aircraft. And thereafter, we are ready to go. Hello, Roma. Uh, it's off the uh, it's with the metro. Headwind will make us a lot slower by average 65 knots of ground speed, less so 65 knots of headwind all the time, um, and that's that's the reason why we have about 14 tons or 13.4 tons of fuel. So just our flight to Madeira takes this amount of fuel, four hours and 20 minutes, and. That's the most interesting part we talked about in the briefing before. Our alternate aerodrome we choose for today's flight is Tenerife. So Tenerife takes another 3.3 tons of fuel, which is about another one hour of flight. And with all the reserve fuel we take with us, that's our amount of fuel we need on the paper. 19.2 tons of fuel. We are pretty full today, so we are near our max takeoff weight. We are, we are not at the max takeoff weight, but fuel-wise, we are maxed out today. Today happens to be Pascal's last A320 flight before he transitions to the A330neo. So it's a special day to go to Madeira with him. All right, welcome on board Condor's A321 flight deck. I'm in the jump seat, my favorite place to be on an aircraft for obvious reason. And we're at a remote stand, but that means we're facing the active runway out front. It's a front row seat to some amazing takeoff action. A lot of old Lufthansa planes and others rolling past the A340s, just great. So we're just about ready to get going. We're in one of the not stripey A321s, but uh, what can you do? You can't win them all. On the way down to Madeira today, always good fun to be up here. Time to get going. In the captain's seat today is Mark Furtado. We're gonna be departing on runway 18, uh, Aniki to Lima departure, and this time 4,000 is blue. MSA uh, all around Frankfurt, 4,300 feet, and the uh, fuel situation is uh, telling us that we have 700 kilograms extra fuel on, upon arrival, that's 15 minutes. Our parking stand, Victor 153, we don't need a pushback, so straight ahead, right turn, and pretty simple taxi routing straight ahead to runway 18. Um, we calculated taxiway Lima. Uh, that's what we expect at the moment, and thereafter, straight ahead, like we've told before, 4,000 feet. Weather is perfect at the moment. Maybe a slight tailwind on runway 18, that's the first special, and another special, we will have to switch off the packs for takeoff. Yep. We actually use a flight radar a little bit um, at our airline, um, especially for a flight like uh, Funchal, so we can keep a good overview of the arrivals. And uh, right here you can see that's our arrival at uh, 1530. We're actually going to switch aircraft with the flight from Düsseldorf. And um, we have... Uh, yep, um, we actually have um, flight monitoring uh, officers at our headquarters that will basically support us throughout the flight. And uh, so we're going to ask them to give us an update on uh, all the preceding flights, uh, if they're going to be able to make it or not. So we, so we have an, a good idea or a good mental picture of uh, what to expect when we get there.
Got off on my Fox, right turn on Lima, November 8th, hold short November. Okay, right, right, turn on left, gonna give one on. The right side, clear, left side. Open a load up, and go through to Victor for time. Richard Victor, right turn on Lima, November 6th, November. As is always the case while in cruise, the flight crew will be taking a look at nearby diversion airports, checking weather conditions there and any other considerations they need to be aware of, just in case they need to land somewhere quickly. That way they already know a good airport to go to, in case anything should come up like a technical problem or medical emergency. <laughs> Let's go, and let's go, and 
For everything that could happen right now, every difficulty that could happen right now, Zurich is overall a great airport to land. If we have a medical emergency, we would land at Zurich. If we had a time critical emergency, Zurich is right here. But at the moment, the weather is a bit tricky at Zurich. The runway is covered with snow. And uh, that's a bit tricky because we are very heavy at the moment because of all the fuel we have uh, with us right now. I will calculate the landing distance of the aircraft with uh, direct get our current direct gross weight, so that is 85 tons. And uh, we can calculate if, if Zurich is still an option for us. I calculated the landing distance with auto brake medium and reversers on. So with that, we have a factored landing distance, so with a safety margin of 2,742 meters, which means when the aircraft is from a technical standpoint uh, perfectly fine, we can land in Zurich. That's no problem. But we have to keep in mind that a technical error that uh, has a performance degradation for us could bring us to a point where landing in Zurich wouldn't be possible anymore. And we have to keep in mind that the weather is kind of critical at the moment, which means that if it's getting worse, we won't be able, performance-wise, to land at Zurich. So what I'm doing right now is I will listen to the artists of Geneva. I think Geneva could be a better option for us at the moment. They're also getting regular weather updates on Madeira to see how things are changing there, if at all. It still seems as if it could go either way. Yeah, we just received a new weather forecast. Issued at 11 o'clock uh, UTC. So it's about an hour and uh, 40 minutes old. And uh, the weather that we started planning our flight with uh, basically said that uh, at uh, 1400 UTC, so in about an hour and 15 minutes, the weather is supposed to improve. But now it seems like uh, everything's shifting further towards the evening hours, so pretty much right at our time of arrival. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll have to see what, what happens. We'll keep an eye on it. And uh, as mentioned on the ground, uh, we have our flight monitoring officers, which will keep track of us. We're actually going to give them, a, give them an uh, estimated time of arrival now. We can ask them to monitor our flight a little more closely so we can get some updates on what the traffic is doing ahead of us, if they're diverting or whatever. So we have a good plan B because we need it. What they do is they, uh, they coordinate and uh, see where they have uh, hotel capacity for the passengers. And in our case, this would be uh, Tenerife today. So we'd, uh, we'd most probably divert to Tenerife uh, and then uh, reassess the situation. Uh, we have to take our maximum flight duty period into account. Uh, it reduces uh, by a certain amount uh, for every additional leg that we fly. Uh, so going to uh, Tenerife and then possibly flying back to Punjab would reduce it some more. So uh, I'm estimating that if, if we can't uh, make it to Funchal, we we'll most probably land in Tenerife and uh, decide to either, if the weather improves, fly back to Funchal, spend the night there, or see Tenerife. But Funchal weather is always uh, quite variable, so you prepare, you spend a lot of time preparing the uh, flight, and then you get there, and it all works out, so fingers crossed. And so right now they're using runway 23, and uh, reported that the runway was wet, so they had rain showers moving through the area. Winds currently at uh, 220, 17 knots. So they're in favor of runway 23. Clouds uh, broken at 1,400, which is okay for our minimum right now. We could start the approach. A few uh, cumulonimbus clouds at 1,800. That's basically uh, thunderstorm clouds. I head back to sit in a passenger seat for a few minutes and have lunch. That also gives me the chance to gaze at the wing for a while, which is the only thing you really miss out on when you're up in the cockpit. Lunch is delicious, by the way. I'm very impressed with this. So I'm going to with the ETA flight monitoring, so we'll inform you. At the moment we have a lot of headwind from 259 degrees with 93 knots. So what we have to do right now is 450 knots through the air around us. The air around us is moving with 95 knots in this direction. So from our point of view in the wrong direction, which means that our ground speed, we are just moving with 367 knots. 
and this is about 670 km per hour. Bordeaux, bonjour, Condor 4, Mike Foxtrot, flight level 330. Condor 4, Mike Foxtrot, bonjour, quand il va skate. Yes, clear, Condor 4, Mike Foxtrot. Did you know it's standard practice at Condor for pilots to give passengers detailed information about the flight? I absolutely love this, and I wish more airlines would do the same. have been airborne for about two hours and uh, 55 minutes now, cruising in uh, Portugal's airspace. As a matter of fact, we're right to overhead of the uh, capital Lisboa. Some information for those of you that are technically interested, we're currently cruising at 35,000 feet, which equals uh, roughly 10.7 kilometers cruising altitude. Our cruising speed this afternoon is Mach 0.77. This equals 77% of the speed of sound. We take that and factor in the wind, which is a quite strong headwind today. It's actually slowing us down with about 100 kilometers per hour. Then we have a ground speed of around 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, so can you please try again? I'll do. Thank you. So, welcome back to our arrival briefing for Futial. Um, what's the plan? I've seen on the box that uh, we're actually over water at the moment. Um, so, the only piece of land we are overflying to Madeira is the island of Porto Santo. Um, therefore, the minimum sector altitude or minimum grid altitude is, we can say like more or less flight level 100 is absolutely safe to Madeira and thereafter we will fly into a minimum sector altitude of 8,200 feet, but um, the airport is in the southeastern part of the island, so if we are from our point of view, left of the center line there's only water, right of the center line there's rising terrain. So thereafter we will fly the Raccoon One Papa arrival, and thereafter the RMP Bravo approach for runway 23, our minimum 1390 feet, and the missed approach point is Mike Alpha 562, so if we are not able to see the runway at this point, we do a left turn. 204 to the point Monek. That's Check the box as well. We will climb to altitude 3000 feet and maximum speed 230 knots. Our arrival fuel will be 5.7 tons. That's a lot of fuel. Um, 1.2 tons right, extra, 25 minutes and Tenerife is still our alternate in the box, right, 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 but at the right, moment right, Porto Santo right, looks right, pretty good as well. Yeah. Good. All right, uh, applying the approach, uh, the RMP approach, runway 23, um, with a final lap. So we checked all, all right, the uh, right, tracks and lights uh, up, right, everything right, consistent with our chart. No, no, no. Uh, we, we have to be stabilized uh, uh, at uh, 1,200 feet uh, so, uh, MSL. No I'll try to be stabilized a little oh, sooner okay, yeah. so we can uh, focus on uh, finding the runway. Okay. Have a good flight. Thanks. I uh, then expect uh, to uh, continue visually once we see the runway. Turn on a final. I set the uh, extended runway center line to fix it. Yeah, right okay, cool. And uh, from there on, uh, I plan on landing on runway 23. The specialty about yeah, that airport is that we have a valley just prior to the uh, threshold of uh, runway 23. So I expect the rise shear initially. Um, and this all happening at a very low altitude rise shear, so we're going to have a ballooning effect. And then uh, once we go past that valley over the threshold, like I'm expecting uh, somewhat of a tail shear. So I'm not going to be using idle power. I'm going to be using uh, adequate power setting in order to fight this phenomenon. As far as the uh, landing distance is concerned, um, I performed a, a very uh, conservative landing distance uh, calculation with uh, 10 knots tailwind in case the wind shifts, and with uh, runway condition good to medium. Right now they're reporting a wet runway. Actually, it's a uh, pretty good runway. Uh, I don't expect any water to be on the runway 
that actually affects our landing distance severely. So we can certainly accept a knot tailwind and the deteriorating runway conditions, and with this we have a stop margin of uh, 198 meters. Okay. I expect to vacate the runway at uh, intersection um, Charlie. I selected auto brake medium, brake medium blue. There's a good chance that we might not see the runway uh, reaching uh, the uh, minimum, so there's a few uh, things we have to talk about concerning management of degraded navigation. So uh, if we have a GPS primary failure on one side or a nav accuracy downgrade on one side, we'll continue using the autopilot on the functioning side. And uh, if uh, we don't see anything and we have the following uh, failures, uh, GPS primary loss on both sides, uh, cross track more than 0.3 nautical miles, uh, nav uh, GPS position or nav on both sides, uh, we don't see anything, we have to uh, fly a goal around. Depending on where we fly the go around, if we're already on the visual part. I, um, as backup, I set Monik and the uh, fixed info. Okay. So, we, most important thing is that we make a left turn away from the terrain. Yep. Do you have any threats? Uh, two threats from my side. Um, you've talked about one of them. Uh, there's a chance I'm that we don't see the runway the right. at minimum, so we should be prepared for a possible go around. Um, it will always be an option, but uh, today it might be a little bit tricky to see the runway at the yeah. most important part of the approach. And the second point is definitely, or the second threat is definitely the wind situation. So um, the weather report is very stable at the moment, but um, I think uh, a good situational awareness is enough mitigation for that, but yeah. uh, we have to be aware of that. Yeah, perhaps uh, as far as mitigation is concerned, uh, concerning the wind shear. I'd be saying winter toga, and then uh, basically flying our memory item. Go. Yep. So we're out of the wind shear, it's important to state that we're out of the wind shear so we can continue in our go around procedure. That's all I have. So, in about 10 minutes, then we will reach our top of descent, and then we will fly a straight and approach to runway 23. And at the moment, no delay, and we have about, um, yeah. 33 minutes to go to our destination and at the moment every aircraft in front of us landed successfully so we hope the best. an update on the weather for Funchal. We've been monitoring the weather obviously very closely and uh, good news is um, looks like we're able to land. The cloud uh, base has been uh, quite uh, stable right above our minimum so we should be able to see something and temperature is currently 20 degrees centigrade. Winds from the southwest so we're planning with an approach from runway 2-3 facing the southwest. I'd like to point out for those of you that haven't been to Funchal uh, before, um, it's a special airport, as I mentioned earlier. It's always uh, quite windy, and uh, you shouldn't be surprised if there, it's quite a bumpy approach. Uh, nothing to worry about. We're trained on this, and uh, there could also be a so-called go-around maneuver. This could have several reasons. Uh, for one, uh, as I just mentioned, the uh, clouds are quite low, so there's a good chance that we might be able to, might not be able to see the uh, runway at our so-called minimums. We fly a so-called go-around maneuver. We uh, set uh, our engines to maximum power and this is uh, quite loud, quite unusual for you that don't fly too often and then we'll be flying to our so-called missed approach point, set up for a new approach and then uh, try it a second time. This could also happen uh, very late uh, prior to the uh, runway due to the uh, wind as well so I just want to let you know, give you a heads up that it's nothing to worry about, it's a normal procedure that we train on a daily basis. So us to appear, we're going to prepare the approach now. We therefore like to say thank you for choosing Kondo. We hope you enjoy the flight with us today. I'd like to wish you a nice and relaxing uh, vacation here in Madeira. And uh, we look forward to picking up in a few weeks. Hopefully healthy, relaxed, and perhaps with a suntan as the uh, weather improves. Bye-bye. Solid -bye. 6 visual at minimum. Okay, Roger. Let's copy. Thank you very much, Kondo, for my folks out. Ja. Das war vielleicht noch viel im Rum und dann, ja. So maybe you first on the ATC. So as we expected, the cloud layer is pretty low, 
Our minimum is pretty high, so we have to see the runway very early and the preceding traffic right in front of us um, had some problems with the weather build-up just at the initial approach fix, which is PILIM, I can show it to you on the on the chart here. So here you can see the runway, runway 23, and this point here, PILIM, is our initial approach fix. That means at this point the approach starts. And at the moment, here's a so-called CB, Cumulonimbus. Nimbus. You can see it right in front of us. We will fly around this cloud and thereafter we are able to get back onto the approach and then because of the low-level clouds, the preceding aircraft, the preceding traffic, um, the crew was able to see the runway at absolute minimums. And that's in our case 1,390 feet. At this point, latest, we have to see the runway and the preceding traffic um, saw the runway exactly at this altitude. So you can see our weather radar is uh, currently in manual mode with, uh, with it set at minus 0.8 degrees and uh, I'll go back to auto mode now so I'll be scanning it on its own and you can see the CB from up there building up around uh, Porto Santo and our approach starts after that. Condor for Michael Fox, how many miles on that heading? Yeah. We need about four zero miles on the setting corner for Mike Fox. Confirm four zero? Confirm four zero miles and thereafter we will be able for right to corner for Mike Fox. Confirm Mike Fox, call the report when clear of weather. We'll go. We've gone on a direct hotel by the left direct to the room So that's pretty interesting to see right now. So in our approach path, there's this huge cumulonimbus cloud and um, we decided to change our heading a little bit so we are able to see this cloud pretty good and we have it here on the weather radar so we changed our heading to the to the south and when we are abeam this cloud we will do a right turn and thereafter we will continue with the standard approach. Condor 4, Mike Foxtrot request slight turn to the right heading to one zero. Condor for Mike Fox with the proof heading 2 and 0. Thank you. Epsgarn and Zidwerk Hotel, contact with wall control when 3-2 days, no 255, what time? Speed 250. Checked. Sieht deutlich besser aus, ne? Ja. Ja, kannst du schon mal sagen, heading 230. Condor for Mike Fox, we are able for further right turn, heading 230. Condor for Mike Fox, we have to continue right turn heading 230, continue descent 4000 feet, QNH 1004. Right turn heading 230, descending altitude 4000 feet, QNH 1004, Condor for Mike Fox. Yeah, uh, 4000 blue set QNH. QNH 1004, cross checked, passing altitude 11100 now. Checked. Approach seat belts. On. Minimum. Barrow 30. 90 auto brake brake medium engine mode selection lass mal auf ignition gehen für die landung nachher auch mit fregen und so engine mode selection ignition ignition approach check is complete check so condor for mike fox with free speed free speed thank you condor for mike fox schwer zu erkennen da ne kann man auf manual kurz gucken Base, no? Yeah, that's why right here. Condor 4 Mike Fox, the inbound peeling. Inbound peeling, and we are ready for the approach. Condor 4 Mike Fox. Condor 4 Mike Fox, the approach. You may continue descent to 3000 feet on QNH 1004. Clear down in P Bravo, approach for runway 23. Descending altitude 3000 feet, QNH 1004. Clear down P Bravo, runway 23. Condor 4 Mike Fox. Hello from Mark Fox with the information, there is a new rain shower over final runway 23, but so far I can still see pointed summaries. Thank you very much for the information, Colonel from Mark Fox. This wird spannend gemacht. This wird tatsächlich interessant. 3000 blue. Checked. And then geht der approach los by 5,8. From uh, Mike Alpha 562. Checked. That's rain shower number one. Condor for Mike Fox, contact Mother Tower, 
Ein bisschen was, aber ja, erstmal links rum, dann können wir gucken, können wir auch Vektoren oder so. Speed 170, checked. Below MSA, checked. Final lap, checked. Corner to 3000 feet set, checked. Gear down. Gear down. Und dann wollen wir auch Tailwind. Speed 160. Checked. Passing Mike Alpha 561, 2800 feet. Checked. Flaps 3. Speed checked. Flaps 3. Speed managed. Checked. Flaps 4. Speed checked. Flaps 4. So there is a lower cloud layer. Ah, uh, here's the Landzunge. Yeah. One is front the runway. See that? Yeah, boy. That sieht eigentlich okay aus. Da würde ich gerade manually weitermachen, dass wir nicht in die Wolken eintauchen. Sehr gut. Manual thrust, manual flight. Both flight directors on. Bird on. Set final heading. Bird on. And final heading. Two, two, nine, nine. Set. Contact for Mike Foxtrot, inside. Contact for Mike Foxtrot, please visual approach runway 23, break wind of touchdown 210 degrees, one three knots, runway 23, please land. Runway 23, clear to land, contact for Mike Foxtrot. Well, please, he's in the book time. Minimum. Continue. What? Landing checklist, landing, EK Memo, landing, no blue. Landing Checklist complete. Danke. Also aktuell hast du tatsächlich noch einen leichten Tailwind. Ja. Der soll noch komplett auf die Nase drehen. 14 Knoten. Okay. Jetzt passiert gerade was. Ja, Tailwind. Ja. Wiper sucks Bescheid. Ja. Wiper slow. Speed. Check. Wiper slow. Wind schläft ein. Wiper off. Speed ist gesehen. Oh, Wiper Alter Gott. Und Power wieder rein. Wind schläft komplett ein. Drei Rotor sind gesehen. Oh. Vier Rotor sind auch gesehen. Jetzt leichter Headwind von vorne rechts. Dreht auf Headwind jetzt. Ja. Speed slightly higher. Ja. Spoilers. Reverse green. Brake medium diesel. And reverse. Manual brakes. Checked. 70 knots. Mike Foxtrot, Ticket White, 
Charlie to stand Alpha 8. Via Charlie, stand Alpha 8, and thank you very much for the detailed information, Connor 4 Mike Foxhot. Connor 4 Mike Foxhot, you're welcome. Non-standard yet, somebody after landing items. Off the runway, man. Yeah, well. Alpha 8, Vasca. Alpha 8, genau so ist es. Das heißt ziemlich genau vorm Tower. Äh, ja. Very, very good job, Kapital. Meine Damen und Herren, Kilo Karl Rotz, Gates Port. 35. Und ich darf hier jetzt noch einmal mit so lange angeschnallt sitzen zu bleiben, bis wir unsere endgültige Fahrtposition erreichen. As luck would have it, we saw the runway with plenty of time, and that means no disruptions to passengers and crew today. The strong headwind made us a little late coming in, but on the way back that becomes a tailwind, and it's going to help us zip back to Frankfurt in no time. Beautiful flight in. Weather was pretty dicey. They were saying that the cloud layer was going to be right down to the minimums. In the end, we saw the runway in good time. And what a beautiful sight it is when you come out of the clouds and see this amazing island. So now we're switching aircraft. We're going to get in this other Condor A321 that's uh, parked next door, take that back to Frankfurt, while another crew comes in and takes this one to, I believe, Dusseldorf because it's got some scheduled maintenance, is what I hear. So they strategically slot them into flights like that in order to avoid having to ferry them while So near to an engine that uh, was running about uh, 20 minutes ago, so it's a little bit warm here. And you can see it right there, they have now changed the runway direction to 05. Ah, yeah. <laughs> when we switch on the engine anti ice, there is hot air, bleed air supplied by the engine itself, going just down here through the holes into the engine again. So the air will be a lot warmer for the engine and so there won't be any ice buildups. Aircraft is perfectly fine and we are ready to go. Cool. Delta Delta Fox, Delta 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 Kevin ready. Nice sure. Taxi checklist. Taxi flight controls. Check. Checked flap setting. Config 2. Config 2. Radar and print which here. On and out of Engine mode selection. Uh, normal. Ica memo. Take off no blue. Taxi checklist complete. Like 
noch gar nicht Line-Up Checklist lesen. Line-Up, take off runway. Runway 05, full length. Runway 05, full length, TGAS. DAR. Packs 1 and 2. Off. Line-Up Checklist complete. Ich würde nur sagen, dass wir ready sind. Von der Frau Papa, wir ready for departure. On the floor, Papa Zell, wind 230 degrees, variable between 180 and 280 degrees, 4 knots, runway 05, clear for takeoff, have a nice flight. Runway 05, clear for takeoff, Corner 4 Power Tail, thank you very much, bye. Also, 4 Knoten, Variable, mit Tailwind auf Komponente. Jawohl. So, einmal kurz ins Wetter da reinschauen. 8 Grad ist vielleicht ein bisschen viel. Corner 7 Delta Papa, wir können auch so, ich gehe mal von Royal. Corner 7 Delta Papa, Taxi, Holding Point Charlie, runway 05, hold short. Du bist soweit? Ich bin soweit, jawohl. Dann take off. Ich mach der Rennverfahren. Mantoga, SRS, Auto First Blue. Checked. First set. One hundred knots. Understand all the traffic. Continue taxi line up runway zero five and report ready. Continue taxi line up runway zero five. B one. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Enough. Checked. Kann sein, dass wir gleich Tailwind bekommen. The flight back is mostly in darkness and it's uneventful. At certain points, we have a 100 knot tailwind propelling us forward and we make it to Frankfurt in just three hours, seven minutes. Compare that to the four and a half hours it took us to go in the other direction. Oh, and I had a Thai curry for dinner, in the jump seat this time. Again, very delicious. And soon enough, it's time to land back at Frankfurt on a beautiful, chilly evening here. Passing around about 14 EMI, near Fox here, Echo 5000 feet. Light slope, Check. go around altitude 5000, set, check. Condor 4, Papa Hotel, Ulam, Mike 9 approved, wind drawn on the 2 3 knots, 7 right, clear left. 
on off for Papa Tell, Mike 9 approved, here now, and Rama Zero 7, right to the Engine on TS1. Engine on TS1. Media 901, contact departure 120155 for Mike. 2,500 Checked Get down Get down Auto thrust off Auto pilot off Have fun Flaps free. Speed check. Flaps three. Cut one. Check. It went for landing. Such an interesting feeling to fly to a distant island in the Atlantic and be back where we started just a matter of hours later. It was so much fun getting to tag along for all of it. This crew was amazing. And Pascal, best of luck on the A330neo in the future. We'll hope to catch up with you again on board one of those very soon. Frankfurt for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.